All right, guys, hi. Thank you for joining me here today. I'm Dorothy, your professional astrologer. So I want to talk about January for the month. And But before I do that, I just want to let you know if you haven't signed up for my email list amongst the new people who go to my website, nhastrologer.com, and join my email list for my newsletter of the new people who do that. I am picking three people every month for a 20-minute session free with me. So go to nhastrologer.com and sign up there if you would like to be part of that. And please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I put up lots of videos every single month and you are notified when they are up. So let's get started. I want to talk about for this month uh, three things because otherwise these videos just get way too long. So I have three things that I've chosen out of the month and there's always a ton more um, that I want to talk to you guys about in the general sense. So I'm going to, give, going to give you that general information right now. And the second piece of each video will be where these things are going on and influencing you for each of your zodiac signs. I also like to pull an oracle card or two. I might just do that too for each sign for the month of January. All right, so let me get started with what's going on here. So I got my notes in front of me. It's a big whiteboard. See? <laughs> talking about being authentic. Very important to be authentic right now. It's always important to be our true selves anyways. This is me, I'm not gonna be anybody I'm not. When we live in our own authenticity, we live true to ourselves, you know, the energy, life just flows a whole lot better. And I know that just my own life experience has proven that to myself. So, one of the first things I'm gonna talk about, I'll tell you really quick, Mercury retrograde, I'm gonna talk about that. I'm going to talk about Jupiter retrograde and as it makes its conjunction to the North Node, the Lunar Node, on the day it goes retrograde. And then, um, if I'm not running too long, I'm going to talk about Venus and Sag. Okay, so Mercury. Mercury is retrograde January 7th all the way through January 26th. Now, it starts its retrograde motion in the sign of Aquarius. It will only be at zero degrees of Aquarius, but it will be at that degree for a whole week. And so we're getting to start off a retrograde. Retrogrades, you know, the day that, especially Mercury or any planet, truly, when they go retrograde, the day that they're retrograde, and even the day that they're direct, they're at a standstill from our perspective here on this planet. And, you know, the energy of that just means that, the, that what it means is nothing's moving. Nothing will move, it's stopped. It's like us when we're in our car, you know, there's that dead stop before we go the next direction. So Mercury tends to be very free flowing, great for gathering information. It's very lighthearted, very easy, kind of like the butterfly, because we're describing, you know, Mercury and its natural rulership of Gemini. Now with it in Aquarius, as it goes retrograde, again, being in one degree for a whole week as opposed to a single day, like it usually is, lots of communication issues are just gonna go hit a standstill. And whether this means that, whether it's communication and you know phones just go bad, computers go haywire for a little bit, or uh, if we look at the other aspect of Mercury, uh, transportation and movement, so wherever you live, there could be some weather. You know, I live in the Northern Hemisphere, so I'm looking at, you know, probably some bad weather that week, just that will keep us home a little more so we're not moving out and about as much, okay? So don't take this as the end of the world by any means, but there will definitely take um, this whole week, especially the first week of January, uh, it'll take a little while for us to get rolling on what this Mercury energy is really wanting to produce. It's not gonna produce much in Aquarius. What it will do when it moves into the sign of Capricorn, somewhere around the 10th, once it moves into the sign of Capricorn, like 29 degrees, 28, it's backing all the way up to 14 degrees of Capricorn, which is where that those cardinal planets have been, you know, right around 13, 14, 15 degrees for months and years on end, right? And that tells me that we got some more cardinal cross, cardinal T-square things happening, and this is the case. So later in the month, this will take a little while, but on January 20th, Mercury makes a square aspect to Uranus, and then on the 22nd and the 30th 
um, it conjuncts Pluto. Now, it conjuncts Pluto as a retrograde planet on the 22nd and as a direct planet on the 30th. So what do these two things mean? And I'm going to get to where it is for each of the signs in just a second, so hang on. With Mercury making a square aspect to Uranus, this is communication, especially as a retrograde planet. You know, there's just going to be, we're going to be getting weird emails, we're going to be getting weird messages, we're going to be getting stuff that is just through the roof very different. Now, Aquarius and Uranus, Uranus rules Aquarius, since Mercury started its retrograde in that sign, um, and the planet that is the ruler of gets an aspect from Mercury, you know, we're going to, um, you know, we feel like we need to move and we need to do something. This could be a pretty tricky retrograde this time around. If you have electronics, this is one of the times, because Aquarius rules those things. I would recommend before you, before we go retrograde, so you're going to hear this ahead of time, because I have it up in December. Um, for those of you lucky enough to see it ahead of time, definitely back up your electronics. And keep an eye on them, you know, fix things, renew things, do what you need to do to keep things in alignment and up to date. And that's really important. And that's that Mercury square Uranus, all right, January 20th. And we're going to feel that a few days on either side of that date, okay? And that's the day that the sun enters the Aquarius as well. So I'm telling you, it's going to be an interesting day on January 20th. There's just going to be a lot of rocking and rolling going on. And, uh... I'll be there to see it too. We'll let we know. We'll let us, each of us know how that happens. Fill me in when you get a chance, if you like. Then on the 22nd and on the 30th, when Mercury does make this conjunction to Pluto, you know, whatever we were doing that went through a major shakeup or just, you know, amazing news. I mean, this can even be amazing news. Don't take shakeups as something that's negative all the time, you know, with that Uranus energy. On the 22nd, when it does conjunct Pluto, there could be very a, a very deep transformation. It's like, okay, so I have this new information. What do I do with it now? All right, what do I do with it now? And this is how we look at it. And on the 22nd, all the way through the 30th, Mercury will just be in conjunction with Pluto that whole time within a few degrees either side. And so we are changing and transforming how we see things and how we feel about something and how we're presenting that out in our immediate environment because Mercury is in charge of the immediate environment as well as the communication piece that everybody speaks about. So if you don't know enough about Mercury, go search it out and you'll get lots of good information about that. So next step is what is going on in what house? So, and the houses will be representative of your zodiac sign. So that is next. Okay, so this is for Aries and oh, by the way, Mercury is retrograde on January 5th, all right? You know, I've been mentioning the 7th, but that was the time that it's in Aquarius, from the 1st to the 7th, okay? Just to clarify that for you. So those of you who are Aries, the energy of all of this Mercury stuff mainly is going on in your solar 10th house, because that's what Capricorn rules with Aries on the Ascendant. And being that it's in your solar 10th house, all of those things I just mentioned, you know, all of that crazy information, all of the transformational pieces are all going on in the career sector and that sector that is about your public image. So you need to keep an eye on that. That's getting, that's getting hit and that means you have some adjustments that need to happen in the, either the career and or in how you present yourself out into the world and how the world sees you. All right, and that's one of the major things that's going on there. Now, the second thing I want to talk about for this month is Jupiter, and it does go retrograde on the 7th of January. And when it goes retrograde at 23 degrees of Virgo, it is also conjunct the North Node, so that lunar North Node. And this is rather significant in my eyes. I like to work with the nodes because they're really important. It's just where we get our information and how we get our information. And then that information is fed into our moon. And when it's fed into our moon, and then we take our moon sign, whatever that happens to be, and we learn from that. But the major thing that we're learning from this is about inspiration, looking at the bigger picture in life and understanding that for ourselves. And, you know, there can even be a shift in what our destination is about, what our life path is about. Because near this degree, at the 23 degrees of Virgo, back on September 13th, we had an eclipse right there. 
and that is a sensitive spot in the zodiac for a while and it's going to be going to be sensitive since Jupiter is right on top of that point and as is the nodes now so generally speaking with this uh, energy of Virgo Jupiter in Virgo and that north node in Virgo that goes on in your solar sixth house Aries and that represents you know really expanding your awareness expanding your knowledge and in seeing what your life path is and you can do that by being using extreme presence in your daily routine and in your work so apparently those with Aries rising have work as highlighted in January and then the career is highlighted in January these are in two different ways as I've mentioned already if you want to know more about this Jupiter in Virgo I have a separate video for that and please go to my website I'll probably put a link up right now where you can just click on that and that link will open up to that video so go watch that too because that will give you additional information yay then the final thing I want to talk about is Venus will be in Sagittarius for the most of the month. So Venus and Sag is fun. It's adventurous. We're looking for our partners to be fun, adventurous, to learn from them. And we may even feel like we're going to be doing some teaching. You know, we all teach in our own way, but we might be inspired to teach and even earn some money teaching. And that would be very a lot of fun. Through the month, it does make a conjunction to Saturn. And while it makes that conjunction to Saturn, then we could we might end up being just a little more serious we might be all of a sudden really shy about something feeling shy or we might feel like we need a commitment from our love relationship if we don't have one yet and so or even fear can come up like we're afraid to commit in a relationship or we're fearful of stepping up and maybe being the teacher that we always wanted to be and being your authentic self will help you with that because you can get past the nervousness if you know it's what you truly want to do. Imagine the first time I sat down in front of a camera with my friend Fran and she was like behind me, I mean in front of me, I mean I thought I was just going to pass out. It was a horrible video because the wind was blowing and it was like noisy but you know what I did that with July, I can't remember what year it was but it's been five years now. Anyways, so I want you to focus on if you feel inspired to be a teacher, then be a teacher. All right, so let me grab a couple cards for you, Aries, and see what they say to for the month of January. Okay, Aries, I picked two cards, and the first one is Triumphant Success. Here it is right here. I don't know if you can see it. Triumphant Success. That's Aries, and if ever there was any. The sword cards do represent our, our feelings, our, I mean, our thinking. It's a thinking mind. So you as an Aries, you guys are always go-getters. So this energy of triumphant success is definitely important. So listen to your intuition and trust what's going on in your heart and you will be very successful. And the second card that came up is um, patience and planning. <laughs> Does Aries have a lot of patience? Not typically. So that Saturn, which is the last aspect I just spoke about for you guys, is about taking your time and taking the proper steps. If we miss steps, and especially intentionally miss steps when it comes to Saturn, we do have to pay the price later on. So you guys have triumphant success, which is fantastic in the endeavors and the things that you're choosing to do right now. But if you go at it too fast and too headlong into it, which Aries can do that, um, then uh, it might not work out because that patience and planning says take some time. All right, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel and share wherever you feel uh, you want to or can. I would appreciate that. And, um, oh my gosh, I have all kinds of online classes. I have private mentorship programs. If you're interested in learning about astrology in a one-on-one -on -one session, you must have Skype. Please come and um, come to my website and see what I have to offer for you. Readings, lessons, and uh, all of this great information. So thank you very much. And uh, lots of love. Blessings.